Hello everybody. If you paint on a regular basis, you need a permanent place to work. You need a studio. And in this video, I'll show you what I have done when I organized my studio. Let's get started. Today, I am the lucky owner of a very nice large studio inside my home. This allows me to work on and off on a painting whenever I feel for it. In my studio, I have split up the space in several work zones. All of them are related to the process of being a painter. Things not related to that process are not allowed in the studio. One of the benefits of a large studio is that you don't have to tidy up all the time. Regardless of the size of the studio, there will always be compromising and this process actually will go on forever. In every painting I make, I try to get better. It can be new materials, I try to refine my technique. When I do this, I need some kind of stability around me. You could say I need a safe haven to be able to explore new territory. Here you see a photo of a studio I had many years ago, and this is my present studio. That is before all the walls came up and it even became my studio. And this is how it looks right now. It was a very privileged situation to be able to decide so much from the start. Obviously, you don't always have this kind of control of your environment. Some of my friends organize their studios so that they can move everything around all the time. Of course, flexibility is a good thing. However, wheels and modular furniture does not come for free. So consider how much flexibility will cost you in effort, money, and time. Flexibility is nice, but go for the needs. And in my experience, you actually don't move around a lot. After a while, things remain standing at the exact same spots, more or less, all the time. Even though I love to experiment, I also love kind of stability. And to be honest, I even dislike a little bit to move things around all the time. So when I started to organize my studio years ago, the task was indeed very exciting. I had a lot of plans and I ended up, probably like many others, with far, far too much going on. I wanted it all and stuffed my studio with a lot of things that could be very nice to have lying around very close for instant use. However, it quickly got messy. And in my opinion, mess is a powerful enemy of creativity. Initially, I spent a lot of time to figure out what I needed all the time. And I mean literally all the time. It can be a few brushes, certain colors, bulbs for mixing, bucket of water, something to dry the wet brushes in, etc. To clean out the rest and store them in boxes, drawers, closets, or other place is harder. Try, however, to make your things as accessible as possible. For instance, try to store them in only one layer. If you put things on top of each other, it can be very time consuming to find the things you need. How accessible you can make your things in the end depends on how much space you have in your studio. In the beginning, I had a small cozy exhibition of finished paintings in the corner of my studio, but I really didn't need this. I needed the space for a lot of other stuff. And this is how it looks today. The following is, in my opinion, the things you need to consider when you set up and organize your studio. First of all, keep it simple. It's easy to say. It's a little bit difficult actually to do it. I use a special rule of my own. I call it the dust rule. This rule is that if stuff gets dusty, stuff must go because dust only rests on things that you don't use all the time, and things you don't use all the time must leave the studio. Ample space on the floor. When you paint, you need all the time to step away from the painting to see what you're doing, how fine the painting is looking now. And this means you must be able to take a few steps back without annoyingly bumping into something. Then, as rule number three, you need ample place on a table. Preferably a large stationary table for all kinds of paperwork, small paintings, framing and more. And 
at least one table on wheels. Number four, you need daylight in your studio, preferably from large windows facing north. Since I dislike blinds, I must be able to move around to avoid sunlight to fall directly on the canvas while I'm painting. With a table on wheels, I can easily move it around and this is enough flexibility for me. I must admit, I enjoy to having the sun shining into my studio from time to time, as long as it stay away from my canvas. Five, electric light. Indoor light is a bit complicated and quite a big subject. I'll try to make it short. If you're only working during the daytime, daylight is all you need. Forget about electric light. However, in Denmark, where I live, we have these long dark windows and I need some kind of electric light to be able to paint when it's dark outside. The light must essentially make it possible for you to assess the colors correctly. Many of the lights on the market, calling themselves, for instance, daylight lamps or natural lights, are, in my opinion, not very suitable for painting. So be careful what you invest in. At least three things are important when you buy light. First of all, the lamps are a value. It is also called Color Rendering Index, CRI. It indicates the board's ability to uniformly illuminate a surface using the entire color spectrum. It is paramount for how well you can distinguish the colors. Is the green a little blue or is it a little yellow? You must be able to see the difference. The RA value is given as a numerical number on the box you buy the balls in. 100 is the best, and that is the number to go for. However, in practice, it's not possible. You will need a value of above 90. That will be fine. You also need to decide whether you want to work in a light similar to the bluish and cold light outdoor, or you like a warmer light like the traditional warmer indoor light. The difference is measured in degrees of Kelvin. You will have to look for the capital letter K on the outside of the box of your lamps. Values of four to 5,000 degrees of Kelvin relates to the outdoor light's temperature. And values of 3,000, 3,500 will be more an indoor light. So, what light is the best? I started years ago using small halogen spots on a rail. Halogen was an excellent light to paint in. It had an RA value of close to 100. It was nice, but by far the most inconvenient feature of this light was that it radiated a lot of heat. So when I was uh, painting in the summertime, in the evenings, I was sweating like a pig. And for that reason alone, it didn't work for me. 10 years ago, I invested in another ceiling rail system. It was uh, quite an expensive one, and I bought spots and the so-called wall washers. These lights use HID technology, and they have an excellent RA value. These lamps generate a lot of light and provides an almost uniform color spectrum representing all colors equally so that you can assess the colors in relation to each other. Most energy is used to provide light, not heat. That's what we like. I tested lights with different color temperature. Even though the eye more or less understands and to some degree compensate for the slightly reddish light, it has given my paintings a slightly blue tint. Today, the quality of the LED light is actually very good. And if I should go for a solution for my paintings today, I probably would go for the LED lights. They are small, cheap, and they have a very long life. However, some LEDs are only 80. Stay away from them. To conclude, go for the 4,000 or 5,000 Kelvin degrees. Have an RA value of better than 90. And one more thing, 
you can in fact be using too much light. If you use a lot of light, your paintings can appear a little brighter than they really are. And when you take them away from the studio and hang them up on the wall, they can look darker than you really intended them to be. The amount of light is measured in lumens. Wise people say that 8,000 lumens will be sufficient for painting. You will have to experiment a bit here. Then, very important, you will have to be able to close the door. When I paint, I hear a lot of music. Sometimes I use it very loud. You know, I like my own noise, but I dislike other people's noise. So, a door to close is a good thing. You also need a good sound system. It's very important and it's only your wallet that sets the limit here. And then again, a little music is better than no music. Then your studio must be easy to clean. I believe it's difficult to find something more boring than cleaning. And a studio must be relatively clean. You don't want dust particles to fly around in the air when you, for instance, varnish a painting. Therefore, Cleaning must be easy, so you spend as little time as possible doing that. Ventilation. I'm using acrylic paint. It doesn't smell. If you use oil, it smells all over the place. So if you're painting with oil, you need ventilation. I know you can get oil that does not smell. You can get turpentine with no odor. You need ventilation. When I started, I was using oil paint. It was nice, but I had a lot of headaches. All these went away when I shifted to use acrylic colors. That's the right for me. Maybe not for you. Acrylic paint is thinned with water. When it dries, it will evaporate the water. I don't really know if it emits some not healthy things. I don't know. But to be on the safe side, actually, I ventilate my studio a lot. Therefore, regardless of what paint you're using, get fresh air all the time. Last but not least, at least for me, I need a piano in my studio. When I take a break, I play for a quarter of an hour or so, and then I feel my brain is completely washed through. Breaks are important. Find something nice to do. Okay. That's it for my studio. I wish you all the best in organizing your studio. Please let me know in the comments below if you have things that I haven't covered in this video. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please hit the like button or subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.